Hello and welcome back to Motoganda. If you want to know what this channel is all about, just check out the channel trailer. Since this is the first video I'm doing, the audio or video quality might not be the best. I'm still playing around with the setup, so sorry for that already. But anyway, let's get straight to the first topic, which is related to today's date. So guess what? 9-11 today, 15th anniversary actually, so today one should maybe not be around airplanes or the airport or anything, of course it seems some strange stuff happens to such machinery on such days, no? At least that's the official story. And that's one of the reasons why I make those videos. So let's quickly recap what officially happened on that day. Two planes hitting, getting hijacked and hitting the World Trade Center, right? Another one hitting the Pentagon and another one down over, if I remember correctly, was it Shanksville or something like that? Yeah, so far about the official story. And obviously, the two, uh, no, wait, not two, the three collapsed towers then in New York, right? Guess you all remember that. It's a bit hard actually to say where, where we could start, where things don't make sense anymore. Of course, there are so many. And actually, I think I'm kind of lost. Never went over here before. I actually didn't take that long to find my way back. Now I think I know where I am. So back to the topic. Where should we start with what doesn't make sense at all? Well, let's go with the first one. The planes. There was a call, like I think two or three years later to Boeing where they basically confirmed that the speed which was that the planes were going when they were crashing into the building is basically impossible. Of course, it's pretty easy. Up there at 33,000 feet, the plane can go at like 500 miles per hour or so. For the simple reason, the air there is pretty thin. If it goes like close to a building, which is not that high, obviously the air is way thicker and it cannot even go close to that far. I don't really remember what they exactly said at Boeing when the guy called there, but they confirmed if I remember approximately right something like 250 300 miles per hour so far from what is claimed in the official reports but okay well it's yeah it's not like you shouldn't go that speed since it's unsafe or anything it's basically impossible they say it is not possible for a plane to get go at that speed at that altitude so two planes done and two more left. So what about the other two? The one in Shanksville, the one which was downed by the passengers to prevent anything worse, like where is it? I mean seriously, where is the plane? 
just take a look at the crash site. There is no plane. There is no remains of a plane visible at all. And especially if you compare it to more recent crash sites like where NH-17 got downed or any other crash site of a plane where it hit the ground there is actually remains of a plane but not with this one this crash site just looks like a hole in the ground there is no real remains over there which look like anything from a plane so my opinion on this is basically this airplane never existed or at least never crashed there and if you might think now well a whole airplane cannot just disappear or where is it gone then well ask the guys from the Malaysia I think it was MH370 which just disappeared uh, was never found again well it seems it's possible to just disappear so what about the other one which is the Pentagon to me it's the same story here there is no remains there is nothing which points to an aircraft there is no wings left, there is no tail left, there is no engines, nothing. Like, what happened there? Did it just disappear all into the Pentagon and just leave a small hole as if a missile or something would have hit? So the wings didn't even leave any, any kind of scratch on the surface? nothing that doesn't sound logic to me actually m what i think about it as i pointed out looks like a missile so most probably it was a missile and yeah i know there is the footage there from a single picture or two three pictures or whatever from what seems like something but not necessarily a plane well what does it prove to me it proves nothing it proves okay it proves something hit there but something it doesn't prove it hit was a plane it doesn't prove it was a plane or anything plus i mean the pentagon come on i'm pretty sure you have more than this one surveillance camera there which doesn't take uh, live pictures like real pictures like just once every what was it five seconds or so you really want to tell me that all other cameras uh, I don't know didn't work or weren't there or I don't know come on it's the Pentagon you have should have like tons of cameras there hundreds of them and tons of footage and if it I mean if you want to disprove those so-called conspiracy theories just release the footage and show like here is the plane have a look stupid conspiracy theorists we always told you it's the plane here you have the proof it is the plane as easy as that and as long as such footage doesn't show up I don't believe that. And to come back to the towers in New York. Have you thought about the passport which was found? Like, I know, nowadays it's quite common. Terrorists always have their passports with them and they're always found and so on. But okay. That's actually, in this case, that actually makes sense. That he has a passport with him when he boards a plane. Alright. But, what doesn't make sense? How did the passport survive? I mean, they're claiming that it was so hot in there and so much fire and everything that it weakened steel so far that 
a whole building collapsed. No, two whole buildings collapsed. No, basically three. But we come to the third one later. So if it was really that hot, how a paper passport survives that? All right, I know the official story says it got blown out by the explosion and then was falling down. But even then, it's strange that it survived those fireball explosion thing we saw on TV. I mean, every normal paper would be burned. But let's even assume that this was kind of a high-tech special passport or what. Then it still doesn't make sense. Of course, if the official story would be true and it was thrown out by the explosion, it should be below all the rubble. Below hundreds of tons of rubble actually, and not on the top. I mean, if something falls down and afterwards a whole building collapses over it, it shouldn't be on the top of the pile. But wait, the main point we haven't had yet. The collapse of the building. I mean, they're saying it collapsed because of the fire. Well, come on, go. story claims. Well, they claim the fire burned, the steel got weakened, and the building collapsed. It is possible, in theory at least, but just for five to ten stories to collapse due to that, of course then the below support should stop it, and especially it should not go down in free fall, like as if there was nothing else below anymore. So if you search online, you find a lot of different theories on how it might have happened, what weapons were used and so on, which some of them make sense to me, some don't. So as I mentioned before, do your own research on it, please. Of course, even I don't know yet how it happened, but what I know, it didn't happen, as the official report claims. Of course, that's physically impossible. Which basically brings me up to the third building. Yeah, there was a third building, even if there was just two planes. But there was World Trade Center 7. So, and that's actually where I'm heading to. No, not World Trade Center 7, since first of all it doesn't exist, and second it would be a bit far for me, and I would need to swim with the bike. Uh, no, not really. But I'm heading for the US Embassy. And again, no, no worries, I'm not going there to blow it up or anything. I'm just going there to prove a point. So here we are at the US Embassy. Even the flag is down half, which is obvious since it's the anniversary of 9-11. So, imagine the following. I would report, look how this building is r collapsing right in front of my eyes now. This is so amazing, it's going down. If I would upload that now on YouTube, you would be like, uh... Is this guy crazy? I mean, you can easily see it's still standing there. Why is he saying it's collapsing? All right, so far it would be just crazy. But imagine further. What would happen if 20 minutes later the building would actually collapse? I'm pretty sure I would get a visit from the Maltese police. Or in that case, maybe even from the US police or FBI or anything. But exactly that happened. 
with World Trade Center 7. So one might argue which things are possible physically or technically or which things are more likely or unlikely. Okay, and I'm quite open for such discussions. But even if you doubt all of that, there's still that one thing left which for me is completely undiscussable. On 9-11, the BBC reported exactly what I was showing seconds ago about World Trade Center 7. They were reporting that the building collapsed somewhere in the afternoon. I don't remember exactly the time. But the thing is, if you search for the report, you will easily find out while they reported in the background the building was still standing. And then, strange enough, 20 minutes later the building actually collapsed. So what's the official story there? Well, that's even more strange. There is no official story about it. I mean, okay, the BBC claims, well, we got it from Reuters. Okay, so it was Reuters who, I don't know, have a time travel machine or else maybe knew before what is going to happen. So, there is no in any way logic thing which might explain how someone can report about anything happening before it actually happens. So what all we had so far? We had the two fast planes, we had the disappearing planes, we had the collapse of the buildings, we had the survival of the passport I would call it, and we had WTC7. I know there is still a lot more to cover about that day, but it's my first video. And maybe there will be a second one about 9-11 someday later. But so far, that's it for now. If you liked the video, obviously give it a thumbs up, write your opinion in the comments, and obviously subscribe to don't miss any upcoming videos. See you in the next video.